Greetings from the black holes of South Dakota, United States of Advertising, Nerd Castle Kitchen. Stan Gibalisco here to conduct a little test. What you see here is a Radio Shack TRMS digital multimeter. Um, TRMS meaning true RMS. You can get this at Radio Shack stores, by the way, for 70 bucks. It's measuring alternating current voltage right now, RMS voltage at an outlet in my kitchen. And as you can see, it's a pretty robust voltage, a nominal 120 volt circuit. So it's doing pretty good here. And it's a 15 amp breaker going to this outlet and there's nothing really else, uh, nothing else really loading it down at the present time. But what I'm going to do in just a minute is to turn on an electric space heater which draws 13 amps so it's going to load this circuit down pretty close to the max and we're going to see how much that voltage goes down hold on just a second I'll switch it on Okay, we've seen it drop from 121.4 volts or so down to about 115 volts. Now, I don't know exactly what that means uh, in terms of how robust the wiring is in this circuit. You would expect some voltage drop. Now, if it had dropped down to 90 volts, I would be really spooked because I would think that there was a bad connection somewhere. in that circuit uh, and that could present a fire hazard as for it dropping six volts like that now uh, I don't really know exactly how serious of a problem that is it's almost loading the circuit down all the way it would depend to some extent on how long the wires are between the breaker box and this outlet and I'd say they're probably on the order of 20 or 30 feet long would depend on the gauge of the wire, but of course it is rated at 15 amps. But if there was a bad connection in there, say a marginal connection in the outlet, you might expect a lot more voltage drop, and when that happens, that would represent a fire hazard that we're at whatever junction is causing that voltage drop. Now, it's important that this uh, voltage be measured at the outlet, not at the space heater itself, because the cord and the space heater would contribute some to the um, voltage drop as well. And if you've ever used a space heater that draws 13 amps, you will know that that cord will get warm. Some of these wires just aren't robust enough to handle that current, and they really ought to build them a little tougher. This uh, particular heater has a very good cord on it. So, and I'm not using an extension cord either. So, that's the beast. Let's try it on the low setting. I'm going to turn it, that was on high. Low, it draws, uh, I don't know, five or six amps. Okay, that's not too surprising. 118 volts. Let me switch it back to high while it's on. Down to about 115. Switch it off. Back to 121.4. So, um, this particular heater, too, has a built in uh, heat sensor. If it overheats, it'll shut off. And on high, if I run it for more than about five minutes in this warm summer evening, it will shut off. And that's an important feature for any space heater to have, by the way. Not only one that if it tips over, it'll shut off, but one that if it overheats, it'll shut off. Because if the little fan in that heater were to fail, it would overheat. You know, those things can catch on fire. Believe me, I've seen it happen. Stan Gibalisco signing off for now. I learned something here. I uh, hope you did too. Maybe I'll leave comments open and you can tell me if uh, that 6 volt drop 
represents a problem because I'm not an electrician. I'm an electronics engineer, retired radio frequency engineer. I don't know that much about house wiring, but I do know that I should have expected a voltage drop here, and I got it. Until next time, so long.